ribose, right on the end of that, that has an OH, so that would do a nucleophilic attack on that phosphorus, they call it. So this O was probably the alcohol on that, so that <coughs> popped up on, an enzyme will push these together. But see how cool it is. I mean, you've got the dog walking the five carbon dog out there, so that's like, you know, just a weak chain link. And you got this big, heavy three ring structure here. And what's its job supposed to be? You got the double bonds here from an enzymatic reaction of breaking chemical bonds. It's going to take two electrons and two protons. So it's the equivalent of an H2 molecule, like H2 gas molecule. Two protons, two electrons. So this flavin. Goes to a single bond, so it gets the H with the electron there. Here, it's not drawn, but it should have another H with an electron on it. And the double bond goes from two double bonds to a single bond in between them. So see how important it is that the double bonds are here. And I've studied a lot of organic chemistry, which is focusing on carbon, and they never talk about the nitrogen. So this is really cool stuff to a chemist. You got a double bond on a nitrogen, double bond on a nitrogen, you bring two electrons to two protons, so all of a sudden this nitrogen gets the H, this gets the H. The double bond now is between the carbons. So see here now, we got the fat centipede. This is, there's different ways of naming these things. One was the FAD plus. So if it's got the plus, it means it hasn't been, boy, these, the terminology is confusing me. It hasn't been reduced yet. If the electrons are going there, it's reduced. If they're taken away, it's oxidized. So there's 10 different words to describe the same process. I should do a little thing, just follow the bouncing electron, because that's where they're going. You got skinny, skinny riboflavin centipede. When it's fat, it's been reduced. So see again, there's something they name, and it's the opposite again. If it's reduced, it's fatter, it's got more electrons, and they call it reduced. It's complicated because it's reducing the positive charge. I mean, you always gotta think a step beyond of what you're talking about in science, so that's where they lose the uneducated. But it just takes practice. Practice at the terminology and you'll get it. Because this, if you learn this, this is where everybody in university level biology just memorizes FAD plus, to FADH2. Well, you know what? If you can picture what's happening here, this is what's telling you the reaction. So you know where the two electrons are going? Well, look at this. This is where the art comes in. been trying to get these graphics all day to go and they're not working. <laughs> so again, here is the NAD and it's a plus. It's nitrogen actually. One bond, two, three, it's delocalized four, so they call it four bonds. That plus means that the nitrogen does not have the lone pair of electrons on it. And this is actually NAD. See, I'm glad this did come up actually because this is the other electron carrier. We had the flavonoids, which will come from B2 vitamins and that. Well, nicotinamide, the B3 fish, B3 fish, is a precursor to this. It's not as delocal. Let me use, I'm sick of using these technical terms for you guys. I just want you to see the cartoons and get it. So in here, you've got this aromaticity. <laughs> there goes the big words again. You got these double bonds, okay? You got the carboxyl with a nitrogen on it. So double bond, whenever you see the double bond, you gotta think there's pi bonds up here. This ring, they draw it flat. It's flat looking out on it in space, but there's electrons up. So there's like a, a ring of electrons spinning around, top and bottom, give them negative charge up there. When you take, in this case, it's one proton with two electrons. The other is two protons, so you can't draw it H2, you can't draw it H, 
you got to know the number of electrons and draw them in there. Nobody does it, but it's the only way to keep track of it. So NAD plus, that's the, that's the enzyme ready to happen, right? You break down something or you're building it, you need to move some electrons back and forth. If it's not using a flavin, it's going to use the NAD. So the NAD plus, this is ready to take them, right? Electrons, here's, it's even got a plus charge to say, come on, come on in. So in this ring is where it'll take them again. This nitrogen in particular, the one that's bound here, this can be bound to an adenine here. Look at this. There's a ribose on holding some more stuff out here through the phosphates. So do you get a feel for how these molecules, it's the phosphates that connect them, it's the sugars that hold them together, and then it's the side chain out here that's doing all the work. So you got the same phosphate connectors, you get the same carriers, the ribose sugars, and then this is where it's happening. Double bonds out there, bring in a couple electrons, you're going to end up with single double bonds. It's not going to be aromatic where everybody's sharing them, it's just going to be these. Now what I want you to see too is, remember this carbon I was saying, it's got those pi bonds up there, 3D space? Well all of a sudden when this double bond is next to that, it's going to share along through this carbon. So you can almost picture the oxygen, carbon, carbon, carbon. All this has a 3D electric charge out there in space going up on it. And now it's just got protons out there with a flat carbon to carbon bond there. Out here another double bond, so there's a pi bond up there. And here's an electron pair. So this could actually kind of be dissociated through here. This is where it got really confusing in the chemistry classes because when you looked here with that nitrogen, you can't just assume that this is like benzene. You can't assume that the aromat I'm using those big words again, that the pi bond is shared through here. So this gives a better picture for it. You're following a proton and two electrons. Where are they going to go? Well, there's the H, the proton. And how's the proton bound? It's bound by a pair of electrons. So when both that pair hits that carbon, all it does is make those pi bonds split to both sides. So now you're able to carry this over with a sugar. You can have a ribose carrying it. You need to bond it to something bigger. You got adenine to a phosphorus. So I call it a phosphoryl group. Once it's bound, it's a phosphate with the four oxygens, but when you get the three, that's when it's ready to have somebody bond to it. So we're back to the flavin here that I wanted to show you. This is where the art comes in. I think it looks so cool if you can draw it in a way that it really looks. It'll give, lend some authenticity to the cartoon of it. Okay, we're going to do it this way. On the side chain here, remember there's the three. That's the benzene. That's the one we're not concerned with. But down here we had the double bond with the nitrogen. So this is a pi bond up in space. Over here on the oxygen, the pi bond is up in space. So this is going to get an H. I guess we can come over here. That's the one that got cut off. But the same thing happens down below. Over here, that nitrogen, instead of having a double bond, gets a single bond to a hydrogen. So that's one of the hydrogen with that. This being the flavin, this isn't the NAD we just looked at because they're all out of order and none of the artwork is even fitting in the screens, but I'm doing the best I can for you. H and an electron. So that's going to be another bond. So there's one on that end and the one up on that end, which now takes those double bonds from the side. Remember, there's one out there that's out there. Now it's between these carbons. So I just think if you draw the double bond in there, it's bringing more life to it. 
And I actually, you know, I ought to just show the one I drew with the pen because it looks better than the fancy art 